The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Okay, folks, thanks for joining us. We just came in on the backside of a very, very interesting discussion. I understood that Jessica Griffith was on the phone, and as we went off, and if I had known she was on the phone, uh, she could have stayed on with Mark and had the discussion that she was trying to have with him, and we would welcome her to call in again, and I would be very interested to know why Jessica Griffith would think that basically glorifying the transgender agenda movement, whatever you want to call it, in any way helps anything to do with good Christian behavior. By, by her making them normal, just like Ellen uh, on television, the Ellen Degenerate show, um, all that has done is it's gotten people used to seeing lesbians, normalizing them, making it seem like a good part of society, and Jessica Griffith ought to know better. And she ought to know better than to be a public figure and think that she has the luxury to call in on a private line and not have to say anything ever publicly besides getting to boost what she wants. Yeah. She ought to have to give a defense at some point. And even thinking that Mark would not record her. <laughs> I mean, what in the world? So... Uh, she is a public figure. She is wide open when she does things like that. And you know, uh, uh, Caleb, I said she ought to know better. I doubt that she does. Her dad welcomed Malvester Dixon into the Ministerial Alliance. And you talk about the height of hypocrisy gone totally to seed is when you welcome a Muslim into a so-called Christian Ministerial Alliance, you have totally lost your mind. And all he would come in there is thinking all these people are just following white devils in Christian religion. That's exactly right. And so uh, I will say that one Baptist gentleman had the good, good mind to uh, renounce his association with the Ministerial Alliance, and I wish I could think of his name. Mark, if you can think of it. Um, it's been a long time ago, and he also renounced women preachers while he was at it, and he's down at Dry Fork, and I wish I could think of his name. It would be one time that I would give a, a Baptist gentleman his due. Folks, you're on a word from the Lord, and we're glad to be with you tonight. Uh, Caleb and I are uh, very thankful to be in your presence. And as far as the lady calling in to Mark, going out in the highways and the byways, uh, before we were able to come here tonight, we were able to assist a young lady that was down on her luck. We help people from every walk of life. We just don't get on television and broadcast it and um, uh, blow our horn, and but I guarantee you, you can find plenty of people who have been helped by people in the Church of Christ, and one of the main helps is they find their way to heaven through our broadcast that broadcasts well beyond Washington, D.C., ma'am. We're about to start broadcasts in the Philippines, and so um, there's just really, you know, we could pull up the map tonight on our YouTube, and there's hardly anywhere in the world that we're not reaching some portion with, with the gospel that we're preaching. And, you know, just last week, just a thing about the last caller from Mark's show. Last week, I talked about inconsistencies in the religious world. Now, the woman called up here, and she said, Who are you telling people they're wrong and what she do to Mark? You are wrong, wrong and stupid yeah. for telling people about all this LGBT stuff that Jessica Griffiths is promoting. She just killed herself right there. And if we continue that in the religious world, everybody just laughs at that. Absolutely. And it's no wonder, it is no wonder that it said some in some surveys that 48% of the people in the United States do not study their Bible, nor darken the door of any religious institution. And it's no wonder, Caleb, with the things that people do, I mean, anybody who is not a Christian, a person who's not professing and watching, that if they saw that display of that lady uh, basically telling Mark that he didn't have the right to expose. Mm -hmm. I, 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 when I was sitting there listening to Caleb, I could not believe that she said, who are you to expose? That's the problem we're having with our country. And who's anybody to conceal somebody that is working wickedness? Right, right. It's, uh, it is a wonderful thing that we get to be with you tonight, and we have an interesting broadcast that we think tonight. You know, tonight, folks, we know as we constantly pre uh, present these shows, um, I've been doing broadcasts since 1997, Caleb, here in this area, and we have made a, just a multitude of friends and, and acquaintances, and many of them actually recognize that the things that we're saying are, in fact, the truth, logical, commonsensical, mm -hmm. but they don't make a change. And tonight, I'd like to talk to our 
many of our viewers and friends that are watching, and we would like to delve into the question of why it is that people don't change, and I would like to say up front that we know that it is difficult. I mean, when you think about uh, the stance that Mark was just making, uh, in today's world, you can lose all kinds of business. Uh, I, I heard last week, Caleb, of a, 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 a group that was asked, this was kind of an oddity, they were asked to make a cake that said God hates fags. Mm. And so uh, I think they refused to make that cake, and there was some uh, back and forth as to whether they had the right to, to not uh, to refuse. But if you're in that business, if you're in the business associated with weddings and whatnot and today, and you refuse to be involved in a transgender wedding, you would be open for a lot of criticism and in some states possibly lose your license, maybe your tax exemption, just all kinds of different things for simply exercising your rights in the United States. But yet a person can discriminate against you for smoking. Right. Uh, that's, that's the illogical world that we live in. And so I, I know that it would be difficult. Uh, it's going to be difficult for you. Um, almost everybody knows someone that is uh, in the homosexual community. I know someone. Uh, I have family members that are homosexuals. I have friends that uh, are Christians that have homosexuals in their family. And you're eventually, you're going to have to stand up and say something. And, and it's, it's difficult. You know, we have friends, don't we, that won't even say anything right. about homosexuality. And we talked yesterday, Mike and I, to Larry Cheek, who's a Baptist preacher in Collinsville, and he told us about telling people that they're going to hell. He said it wasn't wrong or unloving. He said, but you've got to realize the effect you're going to have on people. He said, well, some people, that's just going to turn them off. And we said, now we realize that. And then he said even, and I told him there, I said, now we realize the huge statement that we're making, that you're going, it's everything you've ever heard in your lifetime, from your parents, grandparents, the preacher. I said, we realize it's no small thing. And he said, well, it's not. And you have to know that, I mean, if something, like he said, it's going to shut some people off, but if they're turned away from what the truth is, we can't change the truth to make it, more appealing to them and he even said well we can't tell anybody a lie just to comfort them either so he knows the situation that we're in and so that's why tonight we turn to Acts chapter 16 at least I think I'm typing in the right uh, uh, box here uh, we're going to look at um, a situation Caleb that I think is going to be similar maybe to where we find ourselves today and that is identifying with the difficulties that people have in the religious arena, when you talk about exposing, for instance, and um, are we, um, is that a little bit blurry to anybody else? Um, I'm having a, a little bit to me. Excuse me? Okay, on this, uh, Mark, are you still in here? Yeah. What about that screen you're looking at? Is that, is our scripture blurry? Uh, Excuse me? Yeah, that's, uh, the situation that we find ourselves here in Acts chapter 16, Caleb, is, um, you know, Paul is dealing exactly with the things that we're dealing with. He comes to town. He's, he is in a situation where some people might actually cave. You have a person who is, in fact, going around saying that Paul is a spokesman for God, but she's not with Paul. She's, in fact, under the influence of some... Jews or some uh, individuals who are using her to make money. And the Bible says in verse chapter, Acts 16, 16, it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain dame, so possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the service of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, a lot of people possibly might say, Well, you know, she is actually promoting the God that Paul serves and it would be beneficial for Paul to let that take place. But in fact, it's not because the line would be blurred. She's in fact under the control of somebody who is against the truth. And so here's what happened. Same follow Paul. Uh, in verse 18, the Bible says, And she did this many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of the same hour. And when her master saw that their hope of gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and they drew them into the marketplace and the rulers. And they brought them to the magistrates saying, These men being Jews do exceeding trouble, exceedingly trouble our city. Now, folks, that's exactly what happens with us. Individuals claim that because we're exposing things that are erroneous that we're troubling this city. Now, Caleb, it seems to me that this city... This county and this area of the state was very troubled with religious division of all sorts before we ever came. And so 
we find ourselves much in the same situation. And the thing that I would like to try to discuss with our viewers today is, is we realize that you realize uh, that upon coming to our side, uh, basically saying that you recognize that we are telling the truth and possibly you're considering the idea of putting aside denominationalism, which is not in the Bible, putting aside the illogical behavior that you have to be involved in in order to promote all denominations at the same time while they are constantly conflicting in every area. I mean, when a person gets married and they're in different faiths, they have a fight right before the wedding. You know, nobody wants to have the opposite faith, marry, perform the wedding, but yet you continue to take up for this and we realize the difficulty that you're in. And so, I mean, talking about the religious problems that were here before we even got here, and they continue as we're here because just as you said about, well, she's promoting Paul, and so he couldn't leave that because why it blurred the lines. That's the same thing while we're trying to make distinctions, trying to expose, and what, does the what do denominations do? We, they bring in each other. Another thing Larry Cheek told us about, I said, well, you don't... Tell us where Larry Cheek preaches. In Collinsville at the First Baptist Church. Okay, very well-known church then in right. Collinsville. Is that close to the post office? Yes, it is. All it's right, right across from right. the post office. And he just... I mean, I, we we're talking about division, and I said, well, you don't agree with the Methodists. I said, so you wouldn't let them come over here and preach. I said, they teach uh, sprinkling or pouring in their baptism. He said, no, I don't agree with that, but we do let them come in here and teach. He said, I believe it was Thanksgiving. He said, we all swap out, and we've done that with Pentecostals also blurring the lines and I said to him he said well it's not really my job to go out and learn their doctrines and teach against them but for me to guide my church here well then how can you say to your congregation there Methodists are wrong because they sprinkle and pour but you never make an effort to help them in that right that is absolutely inconsistent blurring the lines and nobody is going to be saved in that fashion absolutely and to coin to to bring in that caller that was on with Mark that is going into the highways and byways and helping these people to uh, undo this division and the difficulties that associate that is associated with this. And so tonight as we look at this, you can tell, folks, that being a Christian in the first century would have been difficult. Had you been associated with Paul at this particular instance, it would have been difficult. You're in front of the magistrates. The Bible says that the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrate and rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Now, why is it that we never see any of the mainline denominations in a fricus or a, fr or, or a ruckus or a faction or, or some kind of thing of that nature? You see, it seems that you all want to do everything you can to get along with the ungodly society in which we live. But yet when you, you look at us, the Church of Christ, and you look at the New Testament, my friends, there is a distinct similarity. We are constantly involved in the expose, the uh, exposing of individuals that are doing things wrong, and it is a very difficult life. And if you're out there tonight and you're listening to our broadcast, I think that many of you know that we're doing the truth, that we're following the truth, but it may be too difficult. And we have a couple examples tonight. Caleb, uh, that I want to present to our community. Well, you were about to say something well, on that line. Well, you were saying about difficult following Paul. Well, you come to 16, he's already traveled how many miles in the missionary journeys that he's, he's on a second one in chapter 16. But in chapter 13, he already exposed Elimaeus as someone that was, was turning individuals from the faith. And in verse 10, he calls him someone who is full of all subtlety and a child of the devil, enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? What was he doing but traveling all over the place trying to teach people and exposing people that would pervert the truth and expose or move people away from the faith? He exposed them. And we all would look at the New Testament and say, well, Paul was doing the work of God. But we can't say the same today for people that do the same practice. And how difficult was that? I mean, Caleb brings that up. And one of Paul's own, a young man named John Mark, actually leaves Paul at this particular instance and goes back not to work with him anymore for, for a, a, a portion of time up to Acts chapter 15. So difficult was the, the uh, situation that they found themselves in that here's one of his very own who ends up departing and isn't working with them anymore. Now that's a, that is a, a distinct picture of how difficult it is. We've lost people, mm -hmm. individuals that have said, we want to follow the faith. And why, you might say, well, why is it so hard 
to be involved with persons that are in the Church of Christ. Well, we have some some um, videos tonight, uh, Caleb. I'm trying to kind of think uh, where I actually want to to start here. I think I'm going to start with uh, a, a shot here of William Lewis Eggleston and. Uh, we actually have a situation that I think dramatizes, if I could use that idea, as well as any uh, story or anything. Let me just see here just a minute. I, I'm uh, looking at one, but I don't see the one that I'm, I'm searching for. Um, we have uh, had opportunities to run into a gentleman named Geno Jennings. And uh, Geno Jennings, let me just give you a... Uh, a shot of, of Geno Jennings while I'm looking for this other. We'll let it play and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, look for the other one just a moment. Let's let this one play. Don't let preachers. That's right. I don't have not one Bible degree. Amen. Never been in a Bible school. Never been in a Bible institute. But I take God's word and kill any false religion on the planet. Now, uh, Caleb, this is a gentleman that's been to Martinsville many times, and he was in Philadelphia at the time, and he said he'd take God's Word and kill any false teacher on the planet. Mm -hmm. And before he came to Martinsville, he actually named the Church of Christ, and we told him we'd be waiting on him. And so um, I'm going to play this one. This may be actually the wrong one. And on the applause that that got, have... everybody in there was just as happy as they could be for that statement. But then when we come on here, and now it wouldn't be the same audience, but still... Those individuals saw the importance of answering false doctrine, and we come on live TV, and what do people call in and say, well, you're just stupid, and you shouldn't be doing that. Yes, and, and uh, a lot of people in the area like Geno Jennings, mm -hmm. because he does, one thing that he does is he exposes the, the uh, uh, homosexual uh, folk. And so let's listen to, this, would, this is, this is uh, William Lewis Eggleston, as he discusses the fact that we went up and confronted Geno Jennings, and this isn't about confronting Geno Jennings, it's not about uh, William Lewis Eggleston, this is about the level, the intensity of peer pressure and persecution that you will have to deal with in order to be a member of the Church of Christ, and I think it's simply amazing as we listen to it. Now, uh, we began at Geno coming to town, now we're going to move to a gentleman who went to the Geno Jennings gathering and saw us there and had a discussion and he calls us later about that, uh, that uh, uh, encounter. Take a listen. I think we may have lost that one. You're on What's the Bible Say? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. Well, good. My name is William Lewis Eggleston. Yes, sir. And I got one question I want to ask you, and I want you to ask me truthfully, okay? Well, all right. Uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken, according to the Constitution, it's freedom of religion and freedom of speech. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Okay. I want to know from you, why is it that you go around all over this city and county trying to condemn all of the religion? You know what? You should be ashamed of yourself to try to sit on this TV and try to say that God is not a healer. Did I say me, that? Wait a minute. Now, now, let me, Did let I me, say let, that? You let me finish, too. No, you. I don't have to let, let you me, finish, let me, let me finish you. I, 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 now, now, before we go on, did you remember that Geno Jennings said he was going to come and he was going to kill any false teacher with God's Word? And then William Lewis Eggleston said, I ought to be ashamed for exposing mm -hmm. individuals who I believe are teaching error. And then he begins to try to expose us. Continue. No, did I say that? Did I say that God? Did I say that God was not a healer? I to tell you, and I want to ask you a question. The day you came to Best Western, you came up there, and we had a preacher. It was a preacher came here in the city. His name was Geno Jennings. You walked through that door, and he invited you to come to the pulpit, and he told you, and you had your Bible. You came up and deliberately trying to condemn that man. And he told you that day, he said, if you come up here, I want you to bring that Bible. And I'm going to take you, and I'm going to chew you up and spit you out the door. Now, that did not take place. Geno Jennings has never said that he was going to chew me up and spit me out the door. In fact, William Lewis Eggleston was quoting himself out of the parking lot. Before we went in, William Lewis Eggleston told me if I did go in, his man, Geno Jennings, would chew me up and spit me out. But we, in fact, have the video tonight 
of uh, me being in there with uh, Geno Jennings. And so we will allow you to lis- listen to what takes place when we did get on the inside. And I don't, I don't remember any chewing and spitting on any uh, particular part. Take a listen. I appreciate a man for certain things. I like to say so, and I appreciate Mr. Jennings for the stands that he takes in areas where other preachers won't stand. Whether he realizes this or not, the preachers that are with me in the Church of Christ, we are standing on that same platform. Uh, We speak against homosexuality uh, publicly. We speak against drunkenness and the vices of this world. And I'd like to let uh, Pastor Jennings know that uh, we have secured airtime if he would like to sit down and uh, have a gentlemanly discussion after this uh, ceremony is over. We're very thankful for him to be our guest about four blocks away at the Cable 6 studio and uh, just let him know that uh, that's available. And uh, we want to be orderly. We don't want to cause any any difficulty. And I just say, uh, good to see you again. Now, that's what took place. Instead of him asking me to come to the podium, we ask him to come to the podium, which would be the entire county, to be able to hear us have a discussion, and we had the airtime paid, and Geno Jennings, the mighty killer of false prophets, supposedly, didn't get out from behind the pulpit not once to come to the television station. And I still don't think people realize how monumental it is to offer somebody airtime. When he, when William Lewis Eggleston says to you, he will chew you up and spit you out, you're basically then going in and saying, I am paying for my own embarrassment. Right. And then no one even takes notice of that. And, and on top of that, Caleb, the, I don't think people even realize what it takes to be in that position where we are right mm-hmm. there. We went into a hostile setting. Geno Jennings has a crowd gathered there who despises us, William Lewis Eggleston being one of them, knows that we oppose what they teach, know that he said that he's going to kill any false teacher, which he believes we are, and we go up in there and control ourselves, maintain a gentlemanly uh, behavior, and offer the man free airtime to, as you say, your own embarrassment. Embarrass us, our own embarrassment, and what happens? They do not come. And you know why they don't come? Is because they're all liars and false teachers. And I do not get any pleasure out of saying that Geno Jennings is a liar and a false teacher. But when he promotes a doctrine that's not in this book, this book says he's a liar. And so, my friends, tonight, it is difficult. Now, we haven't gotten down to how difficult it is. Tonight, we are going to show you just exactly how difficult it is because before this took place, we had one of Geno Jennings' own lieutenants, if I can say it that way, actually approve what we were doing. And in fact, he exposed William Lewis Eggleston. He basically told us flat out, the kind of person he thinks that William Lewis Eggleston is, the one who decided to call in and put himself into this program, you know, we didn't go down and find Lewis, right. William Lewis Eggleston. He came and found us and said, you'll be chewed up and spit out if you go in there. He calls into our television program and, and says that we're dogs and things of that nature. Listen, now, now, Caleb, do you think I'm being clear in regard to what it is that we're trying to demonstrate here in, in regard to the peer pressure? Well, before coming up, I don't know if we've actually said that it is about the peer pressure more than just saying the the trouble. I mean, we're trying to find out what it is that's holding individuals back because like you said earlier, there's a lot of people that I talked to a lady the other day door knocking and she said, I, she said she saw the show and I said, what do you think about it? She said, I like it. She said, I think y'all, you know, you prove what you say. She said, you only quote the Bible. She said, I like it, but she's going to a Baptist church. Okay. And so when I asked her now, I said, why is it then that you still go to the Baptist church? And she said, well... Just grew up with it, I guess. But still, she told me after that, she said, well, me and my husband are Baptists, so you know it's a family thing. Everybody's in it. So what would keep people from knowing, and just like the man that just recently obeyed the gospel, he told me, he said, for years I watched a show knowing I was wrong. He said, knew I was in the Baptist church, wasn't in the Bible, knew I'm wrong. And he said, I just got tired of worrying about what my family was going to do. And he came out of it. And people think, well, that's not real. But tonight... Let me make sure my volume doesn't blow us up. We're going to show you it is real. Behind the scenes at the Geno Jennings event, one of his lieutenants from Martinsville, take a listen as he talks to us about ourselves and what we're up to. I'll have to get 
Okay, one. Um, gentlemen, maybe we'll we'll get some chairs, but well, actually, I'll just close the door. Um, we'll, um, um, I'm going to pick him up in probably the uh, next 15 minutes. What exactly do you want? Well, we have air time at 8 o'clock, which I know he doesn't get through here till 9. We have air, air time from 8 to 10. If he would like In the to studio? Up at, yes, sir. You kid. Yes, sir. Man, you are, this is what God, this yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. So uh, what time do you want him there? If he could come in when he gets through, say at 9 o'clock. Okay. And, oh, oh, and so we won't, y'all want to hang around a little yes, while? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Today? Well, if we need to, we just didn't want to be disruptive or anything. Well, you know. good. I appreciate you doing yeah. it this way. Yeah. Um, that's in order. That's yes, sir. That's what God's yes, people sir. do things decently and in order. But um, let me and then tomorrow we also have airtime after he gets through. Oh man, at six oh, we got to catch a plane at um. He's at six o'clock. Yes, sir. It's gonna take me an hour to get to uh. I our, our plane gonna leave out at um. Um, seven fifty-four. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. He's flying out of Greensboro. Going to be pushed. Yeah, he's flying out of Greensboro. We can. Wonder who has. But I tell time you time. what, I, I we we'll make sure take advantage of the time tonight. Tonight. Okay. With well with, with him. Okay. Uh, well, he said he would meet me the last time that I talked to him. He said he would meet me this time. Okay. So if uh, if he wants to do and that. And Robinson, right? Johnny Robinson. Uh, I agree, Robinson. It's Carl. I know you're probably getting ready to uh, Johnny Robinson here, and he wanted to know that you um, have some time after service tonight to meet him on the air to talk. It's not far away from me. Actually, it's about three minutes. Three blocks, yeah. Three blocks, three blocks, blocks yeah. After the service tonight. He's gonna be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See you in a little bit. Hello. He'll be here in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to get him. You think? Did he say one way or the other? Hello. I think I did. Say it again. Oh, after the service. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir, I heard exactly what you said. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we haven't got too many people here yet, but they're coming. They're coming. They're coming in. Probably got 15 or 20 people here. You got about 15 or 20 people here. About 15 or 20 people. All right. Um, you have to talk to him. Okay. Um, I, I can't speak for him, but I'd rather for him. What do you think <clears throat> should I do? Should I come I back think you should stay right here and, and, uh, and, and speak to him face to face. As he comes in? Um, mm -hmm. Actually, if I would say, okay. um, wait till the meeting gets started. Okay. And put him on, you know, call him out. <laughs> okay? Yes. I mean, uh, yes. he's my leader, my guide, and my teacher. And uh, as far as um, being in decent and in order, yes, sir. I can respect that. Okay. And for some reason, I feel like that you would put it that way as being decent and in order. And I don't see or feel no type of. Um, resistance as far as men, right? but I see that you are here to back up who you are and what you stand for. See, if we have a discussion here, then it's going to be a question as to what really happened. If we go to the television station, there would be no question. Everybody in the can can well, see it. I'm going to tell you like this, and I'm going to be straightforward with it. That will be the best set in the world, because that's what he feeds on, is what people <coughs> have to say. So if you all want to stay and um, ask, that's what you want, uh -huh. let him deal with it that way. Yeah. Now what I really want is for us to be on TV, because then there's no question in the county what really happened here. You see what I mean? And that's what you're going to tell him to best. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, man. So man, you're, suggesting, old, man. you're suggesting that. Y'all got some money, man? Yeah, he is. How old are you? I'm 27. Oh, you're a little bit young. 
had to think about that for a second. <laughs> And, and are you, Where you from? I'm from originally from around Texas, County, Texas. Man, I heard a lot of talk about you, young man. Right. I, I was the one who came and pinned up a couple on the yes, um, on the poles and I, I got on the right of the church, and I put put one in the door. And I heard so much about you. I mean, I heard about you. And um, other than other than what I see now, yes, sir, I can respect what I've heard. Because it takes a bold man to stand for what he believes in this day that we're living in, sir. And then to have people that will um, will stand behind you as you stand behind God. So I can I can respect a brother like that. But um, if somebody going to put the tail between the legs and run, you know, it's just kind of difficult to deal with. But um, well, we're finding many of the of the people that are already here, with the exception of one man, he doesn't like us for some reason. Oh, he's gay and um, he drank a drink wine, look, get drunk, caught drunk up on the, um, up in town. I remember one time I was riding up the street, you know, when you, when you just straight up like I am, yes, you, know, you don't mind saying yeah. that's why he's yeah, to come to him, but, um, I was riding down Fed Street one day and he had hit a pole and, and, um, there was Bill looking, he, he went to the church that I went to, because I was a minister at the, uh, Red Cross Church for years, uh -huh. and, um, uh, Bishop Dillard, excellent man, actually, actually he's now, I don't know, uh, Caleb, what everybody is thinking as we listen to that, and I haven't listened to it in a long time myself, mm -hmm. and the, the full version of that. Do you hear, folks, what this man, this is Geno Jennings' lieutenant. This is the front man in Martinsville, Virginia, and he is encouraging us to push his leader into a scenario where his own leader has to answer us before the entire county. And he even said, bless you for yeah. setting it all up. And it didn't happen. And the reason why it didn't happen is because Geno Jennings is a coward. He refused to meet us on television. He only wants a situation where it's scripted his way. And basically, uh, Darnell Carter there was trying to make it happen. We've got a couple of phone calls. Good evening. You're on live. Uh, word from the Lord. Yes, uh, Caleb, uh, uh, you and Johnny, y'all bouncing all over the TV, and, and it's kind of like jerking, and uh, it's no sound coming on. You on a, you on an antenna? Uh, we're on cable, Channel 5. Hmm, well, I don't know what to say about that. I, I would encourage... All right, we have Channel 5 here in the studio, and there's no problem with it, so I don't know what to say about that. Appreciate your call. All right, I don't know what to say about that. Now, um, the, the, the gentleman that was being talked to, I, I realize this is a version that I left his name out of, mm -hmm. the individual that uh, the young lieutenant was talking about was William Lewis Eggleston. I said, there's one man that disagrees with us, and uh, I want to let you hear again what he said. But... Um well, we're finding many of the, of the people that are already here, with the exception of one man. He you know, I really think it would be beneficial, Kevin, for me to go ahead and um, see if I have the version where um, he actually says the entire, uh, the entire name, and I'm not sure I actually somehow or other didn't, uh, didn't include it when I was putting it together. Let me just see if this is it, and if it is, we'll play it. If it isn't, we won't bother with it. Um, let's see right here. We'll see what that says. You want to take one? Stand behind you, as you stand behind God. So I can, I can respect the But in my... I can either of Excuse me? Two calls. Spirit, both of them were I want you to stay around so you can face the face. And say that it's available and see if Mr. James won't. You will, will he have time to actually talk when he comes in? But in my spirit... Good evening, you're on a word from the Lord. Yeah, good evening. It's, uh, yeah. Hey, good evening, guys. How y'all doing? Doing well. Good. How are you? All right, I must be losing communication here. So, uh, let me ask y'all something. I noticed y'all's program is the only one that has a disclaimer by the TV station. Uh, that I have noticed. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't go with any other uh, religious broadcast. Uh, 
Is there some reason for that? Um, they just don't like y'all. No, there's a reason. We tell the truth and the rest of them don't. Okay, I figured it had to be something because the sister station of this where there's programs on with Jessica Griffin, Jessica Robinson, Sharon Motley, Sister to Sister, and different other programs, and some other so-called uh, uh, black evangelists, black preachers, whatever. I never see this claimer uh, uh, before that program. I only noticed it on the Church of Christ programs. They run this disclaimer prior to your shows. So, and I just thought it was kind of unusual that, uh, that, I, that I see that. Well, if so, you think... Uh, if, it's probably if, like you said, y'all tell the truth. That they know the others are liars, and, and they agree with all the liars. Well, it's not that they necessarily agree with them. They just know that those other stations, those other broadcasts are not going to say anything controversial, or they're not going to hurt anybody's feelings, and they're not going to tell anything that could get the station in trouble. They're going to stay on the script, and they know that the truth hurts, and we're going to tell the truth, and... I mean, at any time during one of the actual talk shows, the news shows or the talk shows where you get live calls into the, into the station, uh, any, any given day, if a touchy subject is uh, on the show, on the buzz or whatever, if they want someone to weigh in to tell the truth, you know who they call? No, I don't. They call us. Call oh, y'all. Well, that's true. Yeah, I've seen Charles do that many times. He has to call you to verify things, and he looks to you for the truth. Well, and I've I, I, that now, many times. I, I won't say that Charles actually looks to me for the truth. Uh, he might. I'm not going to put those words in his mouth, but I do know that Charles knows that I'll tell him what it is that we think is the truth, and we're not going to back off of it, and he does call for that. You know, sometimes he doesn't actually noticed, agree. Uh, yeah, I've noticed that over the years. A lot of times he wants to verify something, he'll... Uh, I want to talk to Johnny Robinson. That's exactly what he'll do, and I've noticed that. But I was just curious about the disclaimer. I didn't know if y'all had ever noticed it, but I had noticed it, and I thought it was kind of peculiar that they would do that. And I, uh, I didn't know if y'all had noticed it or not, but I was just curious about it. I, I, I'm, curious, I, I'm curious as to why we're getting a disclaimer from you. I beg your the phone. Uh, say that again. I said, I'm curious as to why we are getting a disclaimer from you. Uh, you won't get one from me. You won't get a disclaimer from me because I agree with everything you're saying. Well, there's, uh, there's I'll one... I'll have to get with you sometime and explain some things to you that you probably are not aware of that's been going on for quite some time. In the Church of Christ? Uh, it was basically from information that you, uh... They hadn't talked to me about it in quite some time. Okay. But no, the Church of Christ, uh, I still watch Church of Christ and still agree with everything you say. And still, I am still may not be with you in person, but I'm with you, I guess you might say, in spirit, if you want to put it that way. All right. Well, I certainly would like to have that phone call. You know I'm available any time. Oh, oh yeah. I know I know how to get in touch with All you. Right. And it'll probably be pretty quick, too. I would look forward to it. Some Good things night. going on. Uh I need to talk to somebody. All right. Good to hear from you. Thanks for calling. All right. Y'all take care. All right. Good night. Bye-bye. All right. That uh, version that I have here, Caleb, I think I actually have where he makes that statement, mm -hmm. and I really apologize for taking people through it twice. Need to be together. That's what we're trying to do is we think that what that, that uh, Mr. Jennings' a willingness to stand, we appreciate that, and we think we own the exception of one man. Everybody else is very friendly with us because they watch our program too, and they say that we stand up generally like Mr. Jennings does on the same kinds of issues, on marriage, homosexuality, drinking, all that kind of stuff. But Mr. Elphiston is the one man that he doesn't like us for some reason. Oh, he's gay and uh, he drank, uh, drank wine, look, get drunk, caught drunk upon me um, up in town. I remember one time I was riding up the street, you know, when you, when you just straight up like I am, that's all right, you don't mind saying that. Well, I need you to come to him, but... Um, now, he named uh, Mr. Eggleston, and Mr. Eggleston was out front, and this gentleman actually named Mr. Eggleston and then began to list all of the misbehaviors of Mr. Eggleston and then said, when you're straight up like I am, that would be Darnell Carter, he said, when you're straight up like I am, he's speaking about himself, he said, you don't mind saying. And so he went through a list of misbehaviors 
from William Lewis Eggleston and told us not to worry about the fact that William Lewis Eggleston did not appreciate us because he also didn't appreciate William Lewis Eggleston. But you know the amazing thing, Caleb? The first person who stood up when Geno Jennings got up, when, when the program started there at the uh, Best Western, was William Lewis Eggleston. And he gave his testimony right there. And so if Darnell Carter is so straight up with you, that's the time frame where he should have been straight up and said, this man does not need to be testifying in here. That's exactly and right. And so where was it then? And we have it right there for you to listen to. This young man, as he opposes a person in town who he does not want us to be discouraged as a result of that man opposing us. Now, you might wonder, what does this have to do with the price of beans? Folks, this same young man, Darnell Carter, later calls and he recants. He reneges. He completely does a 180 on what he just said to us, and he did it on a live television broadcast. Now, I want you to hear that so that you can realize the actual pressure that uh, takes place uh, in, in regard to uh, what we deal with. Let me just see here if um, uh, I, in fact, don't have that one up either. I sure hope that I didn't fail to get that one. You, do you actually see uh, what I'm looking at here? It would be uh, something about him repenting. Okay, that would be nice. No, okay, it's this one right here. That yeah. says repent. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let me pull that in, and I apologize for... Uh, being in this position, Caleb and I actually were involved in some benevolent activity before the show, and we lost about an hour. And so here we have Darnell Carter calling in to the broadcast. Take a listen. Yes, caller. Hello. Is Johnny Robinson? Yes, it is. Johnny Robinson. Yes. You um, have, from my knowledge, put me uh, in a position where I need to make something clear. My name is Daniel Carter, and um, I'm a long-time resident of Martinsville, my home. And uh, I thank God for Martinsville in Henry County. But um, in the past, uh, whatever was said in a conversation concerning you and me and William Lewis Eggleston, I wanted to make myself clear that the conversation was vain I was totally 100% out of line. I shouldn't have, um, I don't even remember the conversation. I don't remember quite what, what was said, but I do know uh, that I offended him. So I had the privilege to um, see him in Walmart about six months ago, and we talked, and, and uh, it may not have been six months, but we cleared up things, and I repented to him. And then those that don't know, um, I heard anything concerning William Lewis and his family, I have, um, I have to say, you know, that I repent for that, and I'm sorry that I ever said anything negative, because I don't know nothing about that man. Now, okay, your thought. <laughs> well, I don't know how he can be so straight up and say this man's gay, drunk, coming out of his car, wine bottles falling everywhere, and then just come out and say, well, I don't know nothing about him. And, and, and what he actually said in this call is, is that he repented for saying those things. He never, I press him in this call, so are you saying, Darnell, that they're not true? That those things were not true? You see, what took place is, folks, what we're showing you is, we're showing you the front man for Geno Jennings. I will say, without hesitation, amongst the denominational people, Geno Jennings is the toughest, by far, of any one of the preachers that come into this area, hands down. All the rest of the preachers, I've not heard any of them be willing to get on and, and publicly oppose homosexuality like Geno Jennings mm -hmm. does and, and against drinking and denominationalism, women preachers and all of that. He is the toughest by far. But he refused to come on television with us on multiple occasions and his front man, who seemed to be just as tough as Geno Jennings, I mean, if you were to think of somebody that was going to deny himself, who was going to recant or renege, go back on his own word, would you think it would be Geno Jennings' front man? You know what you're seeing tonight, my friends? You're seeing how tough it is to stand up for the truth. The pressure on Darnell Carter became so extreme, the level of difficulty in standing by your words 
which he said he appreciated us because we did not run with our tail between our legs. We stand up for the truth, and it is difficult, my friends. We are constantly being berated. We lose our funding. We lose friends. We have family ca catastrophes on a regular basis as a result of the difficulty associated with being a member of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ, and standing up for the truth. And tonight we've demonstrated to you one of the toughest groups that you know about and the lieutenant in the front of that group, and you heard him make a stand against somebody that he said was involved in all kinds of ungodly behavior, and then he turns right around and apologizes for saying such. But he never would say that it wasn't true. And all of that, even within itself, talking about the pressure that he was under, well, one, he's straight up, and we know Gino was straight up on that subject. Well, when they called him out to testify... Why didn't Gino, with discerning of spirits, know that man, right. whether or not he was really a homosexual and a drunkard, and say, that man needs to sit down? And tonight, we're not saying that any of that is true. We don't know. We're simply saying that people that did know him said these things, that they were eyewitnesses of certain things, but then they turned around because of some pressure, we don't know, some pressure that caused them to recant and recant on television. Now, folks, tonight, what we're telling you is, we're telling you that being a member of the Church of Christ has never been easy, never will be easy. The founder of the Church of Christ went to the cross for it. The promoters of it, without exception, were constantly persecuted, chased from town to town, beaten, maligned, every manner of persecution and, and hardship was put upon them. And tonight... We have the luxury of being in the United States where all we have to do is simply say, you know what, I want to be a member of the church that you read about in the New Testament. And you know what, you're not going to suffer other than maybe some individuals putting pressure on you, possibly like William Lewis Eggleston. And I can tell you, you can take it. You can take the, the garbage and the trash talk that William Lewis Eggleston ha puts out there. We take it. It's no big deal. I've got a classmate named Daniel Cohen who was the only member of the church in his family beside his wife. His wife taught him the truth. He came out of the Pentecostal church and he told me, Caleb, it's not difficult coming out. It's difficult having to convince yourself that everything that you've heard your whole life, he played the drums in the band at the Pentecostal church. He said, everything I heard was a lie. And I knew I was fixing to have to sit down and study the word of God to see what the truth was. He said, I feel alienated when I go to family get-togethers. And he said, I feel sad because I know every one of them is going to hell. He said, but it's absolutely worth it to be saved in Christ. And the thing that you have tonight, my friends, is you have individuals who love you and care about you and who are willing to stand up in the midst of all of this persecution and help you with the truth. And not only help you, but help your family members. Right here in the New Testament is one of the greatest blessings that a person could ask for, and that is having the name of the church that you're in pronounced on the pages of the Holy Scripture. Right here, the Bible says, with no shame, uh, salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. And tonight, the churches of Christ are responsible for this broadcast. They're responsible for telling you truth on any subject about which you may be interested. We will not back off the truth on anything or anyone. And tonight, you be can become a member of the church of Christ in the exact same way that individuals back there in the first century became. And you know how that is? You'll be added to the church of Christ upon obeying the truth. In Acts 2.47, the Bible says that they were praising God and having favor with the people, all the people the Lord added to the church, such as should be saved. Who did He add? The Bible says clearly in verse 41, they that gladly received His word were baptized and they were added to them about 3,000 souls. If you're a person who's willing to receive the truth, which basically means that upon deciding you need to be saved, you will ask the question, what must I do? And a lot of people will tell you a lot of things, but in the New Testament, they will always tell you, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says in verse 41, those who gladly received that word were baptized. And verse 47 says that Jesus added them to the church of Christ. Caleb, you have something intelligent to close out with? I would say Philippians 1.17, that is the only doctrine that you will able ever be able to give a defense for. When Paul said, I am, I am set for the defense of the gospel, I sat in a Baptist preacher's office for more than an hour and a half, and he did not one time show me a sinner's prayer for salvation or belief only for salvation. But he did say we should be saved in Christ alone, grace alone, and faith alone. Well, those are three different things, and none of them are in the Bible. None of them are in the Bible, and everybody's promoting it. And my friends, tonight, we're doing the service. The Lord has blessed us with the opportunity, and how dare us 
not do what the Lord has given us the opportunity to do, that is to tell you the truth. Tonight, you're watching a word from the Lord. This is a broadcast that is uh, a result of the Church of Christ that is in Eden, North Carolina. Those brethren, 250 the Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina, they meet on Sundays at uh, 10 for, 9 for class and 10 for worship. And they also eat, meet every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. We, James, uh, myself and Caleb, we're in Martinsville, Virginia, Starling, 823 Starling Avenue. We meet on Sundays at 9, 10, 11 a.m. and sun, uh, Wednesday nights at 7. And you can also meet with the good brethren over in Danville, Virginia, the Danville Church of Christ, which is 120 American Legion Boulevard. They meet 10 and 11 on Sundays and then Tuesday at 7. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? And you'll get a word from the Lord. Good night. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership.